Polish pałatkę. Polish military cape, Polish lawu. Uh, they are getting more and more popular in the bushcraft community, but there's very little info about them. So I thought I'll share what I know. And because I'm Polish, I probably know a lot. Uh, but first thing first, to avoid any confusion, uh, when you start researching online, uh, you'll find several different options. What you're looking at, and what you probably want, is a Polish palatka. Uh, the real name is palatka, but you don't even have that uh, letter in the alphabet. So Polish palatka. Uh, military cape, half tent. Uh, there's also there are also other options, uh, including Russian plush palatka, which is very similar, but it's got a bit of a different shape. There's also a Czech uh, tent half, uh, even smaller, and there's German Zeltbahn, I believe, uh, which is even smaller. It doesn't even cover your head; it's just just a body cape, and it's a really, really makes a really, really tiny tent. So if you want to use it as a tent half or what they call a Polish lavu, this is what you want. You want a Polish, Polish military cape, Polish palatka. What you're looking at right now. So now you know what's what, let's start with a bit of a buying guide. First thing to know is that a Polish, plush, Polish palatka come in three sizes. And you can tell that by the number of eyelets at the bottom corner. This is size three, the largest one, so you've got three holes. And Especially if you want to use this as a tent, as a lavu, I would highly recommend getting size 3. Now, another thing, uh, these are not made anymore. You can only get surplus, but what you really want is an unissued one. So basically something that's been lying in a, in, a, in a warehouse for the last 30, 40 years. They've been made through Second World War until 1980s, I believe. And the best way to know, to make sure uh, your palatka is unissued, you know, un unwashed, it's still got all the proper waterproof properties, they should come, if they've been unissued, they should come with a little label and sewn in under the button. Like that. And I will tell you what's what. Let me find a stick. So, there's the label, focus, there we go. So, uh, there we go. So, this is the stamp of the factory where it came from. Uh, just manufactured in uh, Gerardo, which is like a, like a small town where it's been manufactured. Uh, Cape tent half with the mast, serial number, just uh, some more numbers and you can see size number three for people between 180 190 centimeters tall uh, production date mine's been made 1978 batch number uh, number of the group of people that they made and uh, quality checks basically number one but that doesn't matter don't, don't worry about that so this is the label that should come with your cape if it was unissued there's also another thing every cape will have a similar stamp like all military equipment there we go can you see it more or less yeah it's very similar just a serial number date of uh, manufacturing uh, that's just like uh, what type of the oh it doesn't matter just more numbers uh, m o n military uh, department of, of sorry department of defense that's polish like ministry of defense and some stamps so that's all the marking you can find 
on the tenth half when you buy it. And one last, one last thing. Uh, there is no reason uh, for the cape for the tenth half to be moldy or rotten. Um, especially size number three is getting quite scarce and hard to get and people are selling the lowest grade um, it's normal for like the edge to be a bit gray or you know just just the, just the corner to be a bit grayish but do not do not uh, bother if if the whole surface is gray and fluffy and moldy because this is canvas a natural fabric and mold will damage it you, you will lose the waterproofness and the strength and you will see it you know if you put it up to the light you'll see holes through it so um it's it's a really really big, big thing if you buy it online and you get it first thing to check just lay it flat and make sure it's not moldy did i forget something i always forget stuff two more things uh you have to remember these were made uh, the cheapest possible way that was like soviet military equipment so yeah the cheapest possible way um so it might have faults uh, like for example on this one i'm not sure we'll be able to see that uh, if you look closely this stitch the, the brown thread have missed a little bit have missed uh, the layers so I had to redo it myself with a bit of a thread and a sewing machine. Now this is normal. Uh, it's very hard to get a perfect one. Um, basically, when you get it, just lay it flat and make sure all the stitches are. You see, you get you get you get little flowers like you get stuff like that. Tangled threads. There you go. But again, that's normal. Don't worry about it. The main thing is make sure it's clean and not moldy. And another thing, uh, it should it should come with a mast. It should come with a mast. Uh, sometimes it don't. Uh, people don't use them anyway because you can replace them with a stick. But in theory, they should come with a mast. And I'll show you that in detail. So, comes in a nice little bag, button. Now, you have to remember, this is just like the tent half, this is half of the mast. So every soldier would have one cape and half of the mast. There we go. So uh, this is a two section version. The, they were also made in three sections so basically shorter and three tubes makes no difference they they all the same um, so what you get you get two ten halves and you get four pegs which are really funky yeah so basically they are this shape, so they sit nice and tight in the in the, in the tube. Um, they are steel, so they are quite heavy and, as you can see, a bit rusty. I would replace them with like aluminium shepherd's hooks, just lighter or whatever. But yeah, um, if if your cape is really new, it's really nice. It should come with half of the of the mast either two or three section and there you go top ends bottom ends and you basically you pop the top and there's your there's your first half we're gonna use that later for time building Okay, now I'll show you some details, uh, basically some features, how it's made. It's basically a big, massive sheet of fabric with several features. So, on the bottom edge, you got eyelets. 
little close up. That's the inside side of the cape. And you get five eyelets. Now, there's also a sleeve slits. That's the inside version. So you'll be putting your hand through this to the outside. And on the outside, you've got flaps. So you can adjust whether you want it, you know, big or tight or you carrying a weapon or just want to work around. You also uh, have two cords. One in the middle. to create uh, a neck so you can throw it over your shoulders like that and there is a second cord that goes through the top edge of the hood so you can cinch it down I'll show you when I, when I, when I put the cable on Another feature, uh, each edge is different, left and right, they are different. So the left edge only have button holes. And going back to my uh, previous statement, one of the holes was uncut, so I had to cut it with the, the, the standard blade. But again, what do you expect? So that's one edge. And the second edge has buttons, but it's got two rows of buttons. So there's one row of buttons, and there's a second row of buttons, and they are different. If you look closely, the outside buttons are really flat with the fabric, but the second row of buttons they are raised see there's this there you go so they are not flat with the fabric they are raised not only that but the raised buttons have a flap so basically you can put another layer and the button is raised enough to also accommodate the overlap flap. Uh, we're going to use that when uh, making a tent. So you get the flap all the way round to the to the top, where you get a little hood. And the way we're going to use it is we're going to flip it over. I'll show you in detail when we when we start making a tent. So you're basically going to end up with two layers here and a lovely hood. And now the last feature, the most important one, and the one that pushed me to make this video because it drives me absolutely mad. Uh, this uh, cape have two sides this is the inside this is the outside with the flaps this is the inside with the print and the little cord and this is the outside the reason is the reason being this is canvas it behaves a lot like a soft shell so if you ever if you ever try 
an, um, an umbrella in the rain and you start rubbing underneath uh, sooner or later you're going to break the surface tension waterproofness whatever and it will start leaking same on the canvas tent if you start rubbing on the inside while the rain is pouring it will start leaking and for this reason the inside of the cape have a reinforcement basically an extra layer of fabric that goes exactly and directly on your shoulders just to reinforce the waterproofness and uh, the wear of the cape another reason for uh, wearing the cape this side out and if you look closely this is a solid layer of fabric there is no extra layers there is no un unneeded stitching on the inside you got all the all the extra layers of fabric uh, all the stitching and basically there's more uh, for water to pen penetrate also if you wear it this side out the water will simply flow into the arm slits and on your body on your legs I guess how I know so please guys please remember this is the outside with a smooth fabric and the flaps the flaps are actually sewn at the top so the water can't go in and also you will look stupid with that little cord on your back so yeah there's your uh, Polish cape, tent half, Polish pawatka. Now, how do you wear this thing? So to put this cape on, you start with this cord. Uh, you need to try it a couple of times to know how, how tight you need to cinch that. Just a little bit, just, just to keep it from sliding off your shoulders. And then you throw it off your shoulders, there you go. And I recommend using the raised buttons and I'll show you why in a minute because if you use the raised buttons it's easier to do up this will do for now arms through so if you use the the buttons under a flap first of all you can use a flap but it's a little body I, I never had to do that but also the cinch cord for your hood will line up so you can tie a knot the the flat buttons are really only for um, you can actually make some structures with couple of uh, uh, capes or if you want to use it as a makeshift bivy so you basically want to mm, button it uh, all the way down and just put your sleeping bag in it uh, just a feature just you know so you can improvise more more ideas uh, let's do one more now the hood the hood uh, if you're wearing a helmet or a, or a hat you can of course cinch the whole thing around your neck and you're good but if you want to use it as a hood you have that lovely feature here and from my experience the best thing to do with it is to just tuck it in tuck it inside so it doesn't flap on your face especially in the heavy rain uh, here you go and there's your polish cape uh, i am 6'4 so 190 centimeters tall and it's just about right 
for me. So that's all there is to it. Uh, as long as you put it on the right side, <laughs> uh, just tighten the neck cord, button it down, and then you're good to go. Polish cake. Now, we've done the potatoes, let's do the meat. Let's build a tent. <sighs> Okay guys, so I've done the hard bit for you. I've buttoned, I've buttoned the two halves together. So we've got nine buttons on each edge, plus the flap, times two edges. So that's 36 buttons. And like I said before, if you use the raised buttons and the flap, it will Go like this. So you got three layers, right? All the way down. Now, the confusing bit. What to do with the top? Because right now, it looks like this. Can you see it? Oh, too high, okay. So right now, it looks like this. So like I said before, you need to flip, the, you basically, you put the top corner inside. So now, you get a nice peak. And you get a lot of layers underneath for the mast to support. And you do it on both, on both hoods. There you go. So you basically have two peaks. Like that. Also, I have assembled the mast. There you go, can you see it? Yeah, there we go. Now, so two and halves, one plug is hanging, and you use you're going to use the plug as a, as, a, as a foot for the mast. So you're putting this end inside a tent half. But we're going to start with pegs. This is getting heavy. Um, I'm not sure I've mentioned uh, one tenth half in size three is exactly 1.5 kilos and another 200 grams for for the mast half with with the steel uh, pegs so just just the skin of the tent is exactly three kilograms you probably noticed my little mod a bit of paracord in each eyelet um, this this tent is quite uh, small especially for a big person like myself uh, and you need every inch of space every centimeter so this will cause if you stick it to the ground by the eyelet you're losing some uh, you're gonna lose some space basically because the edge is gonna flip over and this will allow you to use every every centimeter of the space of the tent half Okay, so we're gonna start with uh, staking all the eyelets but quite loosely so we have like room uh, to move around and to improve after so we just lightly stake it down all around
how does it look like? Perfect. So now, the mast. Now once, once it's standing more or less, you can adjust the corners. the idea now you can unbutton one of the sides to get it So there is your Polish level. Now, the most confusing bit is at the top, because you have two hoods from two different halves. So. Now, this can be used for ventilation. You can even put a chimney if you decide to have a stove inside. But the best way to use that is basically throw one hood over the other one. You do get a bit of an imperfection. See, there's a bit of a conflict of the layers, but that's the best way to do it. You just throw one hood over the mast and then the second hood over the mast. And you get a really, really waterproof peak. Now, another good thing you can do Especially when it's not raining because um, this is canvas and it's going to be really dark inside as you can undo the sleeve flaps you 
you grab a bit of stick and you can actually spread the windows open to let some light in. Like that. So you can see this lets some light in actually just through this hole. So, a full view of the tent half. And I'll show you the best way to fold Polish tent half lavu military cape. Because it is Quite a lot of fabric. So the way I do it, ah, before we do that, of course I forgot. Um, get a little sweaty from that buttoning and buttoning. Before we do that, some donations. So this one, like I mentioned, is the size 3, the largest one. So it is. Uh, each section, you've got four triangle sections, is exactly the same. So the bottom is 100 centimeters, one meter wide, exactly. The bottom edge. The bottom edge is 190 centimeters long. And it's three meters twenty centimeters wide. Now the mast, fully assembled. If you want to replace it with a stick, is hundred and forty-two centimeters long. Uh, I know some people that they actually do. You can actually mark the length of the pole on the edge and then you just know what stick you need. But yeah, what is the best way to fold a Polish army tent half? What you need to do is very simple. You just have to keep folding in half along the main axis. axis. Perfect length. And half again. Mm. 
Now, the top corner The top corner doesn't have to be perfect. It's actually even better if it's if it's like a bit sloppy. And now you fold in half again. So you end up with a long, thin triangle. And you'll notice, you know what, you're going to see it better in the dress. And after three folds, you'll notice that the base of the triangle is not even. You've got a right angle here and a sharp angle on this side. So you bring the tip to the right angle and you fold the sharp angle inside. So it should look like this. And now I've made myself a couple of straps with a little buckle. And the whole strap is half a meter, 50 centimeters long. So we keep that uh, strap handy. And you start rolling as tight as you can. There you go. It's nice, even, and just use the strap. So, and you can strap it to your bag or whatever. Nice and tight, really compact. Kilo and a half. So, there you go. There's your uh, Polish uh, tent half, Polish military cape, uh, Polish labu. Um, they're not the lightest, but they are very durable. Uh, the fabric is really warm, nice to the touch. You will never get sweaty in it. You can you can use it, use it as a BV, just wrap yourself uh, by the fire, and they're really nice, really warm, breathable, and just a, just a cool bit of kit. Um, I hope that helps you. Uh, and yeah, it's a really simple device as long as you know uh, which way. <laughs> how to wear it and how to start on a, on a, on a tent. It's pretty much self explanatory. Oh, one more thing. Um, it's a vers very versatile bit of kit, so your imagination is your limit, really. Um, you don't have to use uh, the pole because of that hood. You can actually put a pine cone inside or a, or a rock and tighten it with a cord and you can actually suspend the whole tent uh, in the air which eliminates the pole in the middle gives you a little bit more uh, space inside um, you can use just one half as, as a lean-to using the same principle just pulling on the on the, on the corner ah, there's plenty of uh, videos and on the internet and images anyway hope that helps and uh, yeah cool see you guys